This week begins a whole new chapter for Hotel Cecil, or should I say Hotel Cecil Apartments. <laughs> After almost five whole years of the Hotel Cecil being closed, it finally reopened this last week. They had a ribbon cutting ceremony on Tuesday and you know I was all over that shit. <laughs> so if you're new, I live across the street from the Hotel Cecil and I've lived here for a couple years. I started documenting things that I would see from my window that were unexplainable or that were spooky. And then that kind of just escalated into this deep, dark rabbit hole that I went in. I have a notebook of all these things that I've seen, room numbers. I went in there a couple months ago, finally, and explored it's this whole side of content creation that I have, which I'm honestly just really passionate about. The ribbon cutting ceremony was Tuesday, December 14th at 9.45 a.m. And it was a public event. Well, it was supposed to be. So I went there, dressed kind of nice. I even asked when I got in if it was okay that I was there. And they said, yes, it's a public event. Then I started live streaming and it was beautiful inside. I mean, it just looks so clean and nice and a little bit spooky, but it was beautiful. They were setting up the cameras, they had the podium, they had the red ribbon that they were gonna cut. I mean, it was definitely surreal. I mean, it felt like my baby was about to graduate because I'm delusional and I think that I'm somehow involved with this building. <laughs> But about 15 minutes in, the director of operations came up to me. You can have this outside for me. Oh, yeah, why is that? This is a private event. Oh, they said it was public. No. It's not. Oh. I thought that was kind of funny because he came straight up to me and not some of the other people that were dressed less or that were vloggers. I know that the owner doesn't like me or so I was told by one of the guards um, because of like the content that I do and my drone series and all this stuff. And so my red hair was showing and they know who I am. Um, otherwise they would have went to somebody else first. All right, I'm getting kicked out, you guys. Ugh. Well, this isn't inside, right? This is fine? Yeah, I mean, now you're there, I mean, I can't tell you that. Time. Okay. okay. Part of my intentions of being in there was to ask some of these people their thoughts. And now since I was kicked out, I'm automatically thinking everyone turned their head seeing them walk me out. So no one's gonna wanna associate themselves with me now. But maybe they will if they're leaving and you know, I'm just standing there quietly. And the guard, he was like- Are you wanna have it to be the guy on the front street? Oh yeah, that's me. That's you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like a really big moment for me. Well, I feel I like bet. it's like, oh, it's my favorite yeah. yeah, I've been trying to look for you, man. I've seen the videos and I was just security here for like a few months. I heard all the stories. Oh, you have? Oh, I bet you have. Started too real quick, man. You're like, you were like wall going there, man. I mean, I just assumed it was like a public thing, you know. Take me to the, not take me to the yeah. gray area. Yeah. 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 Whatever, it's fine. Um, little salty, but it's okay. But there was another guy there who definitely does videos and he was exercising his rights. I mean, as he should. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. 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 Tell me some respect, bro. Mm, that's a sidewalk, so I'm not gonna uh, expect you to I'm not gonna expect you to I'm not gonna expect you to you. Why are you so mad? Hmm? Yeah, you're mad. You alright? <laughs> you need like a cupcake or something? I'm gonna put it in the note. Put the thing straight on it. Huh? Put it in the note. <laughs> Darren, I think is his name. He's he's way ballsier than I am, and good for him. That's so ballsy. Did you already get on those gimbals? You can see too? No, I'm good. Right. It takes that kind of person to do what we do, and clearly I don't have that. <laughs> I just didn't want to cause any problem or get into trouble or whatever. Plus I wanted to like, you know, come back and talk to people at some point. Unfortunately, because he was kicked out as well, it makes me and him look like we're together. And at that point I knew I didn't really have a chance, but I wanted to stick around a little just in case. And then out of nowhere, the guard comes up to me and he threatens me. I thought you get your shit pushed out, bro. What? I thought you get your teeth pushed in. <laughs> you laugh, right? You're not about to go viral, bro. Why? Look here right now. I could not believe that. Like he literally said, you want your teeth to get kicked in. And I was like, wait, what? 
and people on my live were like, oh my God, you got threatened. I'm coming right now. I'm going to fight him. Sent me his company's information. It was like, you need to report him. And I love you guys. You guys like look out for me and it means a lot. But anyways, I left and I just continued the live stream from my window. <laughs> it was actually really funny the way it played out because I could see Darren and the guards and there were, I don't think there were any cops that came, but people were leaving and I was like, okay, people aren't talking to Darren. So they wouldn't have talked to me. So that was a ribbon cutting ceremony, which means now the Hotel Cecil apartments are open for unhoused Los Angeles residents who make less than 30% of the area's income, which means you have to make under $24,850 a year to be potentially accepted into the program to live there. And rent ranges from $900 to $1,200 a month. And what's interesting is that these are single room occupancy units, which means it's like 150 to 250 square feet rooms. They have to maybe share bathrooms or share a kitchen, kind of like dorm living to some extent. And this type of housing is actually like kind of unheard of now because in the 20th century, this was more common, but now it's practically impossible to build under those same codes. So to me, it kind of pays homage to the way the Hotel Cecil used to be. So it's almost kind of backtracking into the vibe that it was before. I don't know, that's my superstitious mind though, but I just think that that's kind of cool and it's kind of a cool way to honor the way the building used to be. So that's one of the reasons why this project of restoring the Cecil was so unusual. But another reason is because the developer was a for-profit developer and not one of the nonprofits that specialize in permanent supportive housing. And also the building's conversion was entirely financed by private capital. So they didn't rely on taxpayers. And because this was a historical landmark, which means that, you know, there's history here and it's almost been standing for a hundred years, they could do something called adaptive reuse. And what that means is that they were able to restore the aesthetic of this building, but keep the historical features. And because of that, it cost $75 million for this whole process to restore it instead of like $300 million, which is what it would have cost if they had remodeled it as a luxury hotel, like they had initially planned. When the Hotel Cecil closed in 2017, there were articles that came out about how the owner was shutting down because he wanted to make plans about putting a rooftop pool and bar. He wanted to make it a luxury hotel and apartments and just kind of revamp it and make it like super cool. And they had plans towards doing that and they were going to start, but then COVID happened. And instead, what I guess they decided to do is transform it into the Skid Row Housing Trust instead. So this is kind of a place where a lot of the homeless people or people who make very little money can go in and get their shit together so they can have a better life like i i think it's awesome what they're doing and i i love it but it's also like okay what were your intentions though i started thinking they're just doing this because they're trying to find a loophole like they were trying to do when stay on main opened because of the restrictions around the hotel we developed a concept for two separate hotels in one building the stay on main hotel would be a youth hostel for the modern traveler and the Cecil would be for our tenants. They were trying to solve the problem in a creative way, trying to make a profit off a hotel, which has negative connotation and a lot of bad press. And in a way, that's what they're doing now by deciding to restore the Cecil through adaptive reuse to save money, essentially getting them a 75% off discount in exchange for keeping its reputation the same. And then going on to making a deal with the Skid Row Housing Trust. I'm just saying maybe they back themselves into a corner and then they start cold. <laughs> So after I found all that out, I started thinking, well, then why would they do PR earlier this year with the Netflix documentary, The Vanishing at the Cecil Hotel? Why would they agree to Ghost Adventures after the same owner said no for years prior to that? Then all of a sudden this year, they just decide, okay, yeah, let's do all this PR, but then we're not really gonna open to the public. Why is that? Because it was a for-profit developer using private capital. It would make sense to me that they probably already had the deal ready with the Skid Row Housing Trust and they checked all their boxes before. They made sure that they were gonna make a good amount of money from it, that it was gonna work out. They probably were waiting until they made an executive decision on what they're going to do with the hotel. And as soon as they decided that it had nothing to do with really the general public, they probably were like, okay, yeah, let's just make some extra money because what is there to lose now? It probably helped them finance the rest of restoring the building. So they probably didn't care about, oh, there are spirits here, there are ghosts. Oh, we're gonna solve the case. We're not gonna solve the case. They probably were just like, 
Great, okay, we don't care because it's never gonna really be open to the public. So smart, but that's just what I think. I could be completely wrong, but I feel like that would make sense as a business. And if it was open to the general public, then I would assume they would have to really figure out how to separate the Skid Row Housing Trust program and regular renters. So it would be the stay on Main and Hotel Cecil situation all over again, which obviously didn't end well. And now with all the press around it, they probably are concerned about people who want to go in and take their own life or people who want to go in and do seances or break onto the roof and people like me who are TikTokers, YouTubers who want content. It just feels like there'd be a lot of trouble there. So it makes sense why they would just keep it as a low income housing program, at least for now. And I think that's what it will only be for a long time in this next chapter. Now they just have a specific demographic that they can focus on and manage, and they don't have to worry about anything else. But they'll have people visiting the outside. That's why they hired a guard, to keep people out. And that's why they put paper over the window in the front entrance. We got people like climbing through the, to the front of the building, you know, trying to get to the, the front gate of the building where the glass is. Like everything was crazy. So you had to just walk the hallway. That's what my job duty was. My first night there, I was scared as f I would hear like people breaking in. I would hear people crawling through the fire escapes, rats climbing through the walls, like weird noises, stuff like that. I'll see a door open and I see her closed next, like next second later, I'm like, what the heck? Like this place was really weird. And I really had some bad vibes from this place. My friend is the vice president of development at BLVD Hospitality, which was the company to help restore this building. And so I asked her if she wanted to do an interview. She basically was like, I have to ask my boss before I can give you any information. But she did say this, quote, just Skid Row transition housing, pretty minor cosmetic renovation, but if I can tell you more, I will. And then she also said this, which I love, I love her. I can say that I've toured the whole building, including the basement and all around, and took pics of everything, thinking there might be something creepy, but unfortunately nothing showed up in the pics. Of course, I proceeded to tell her, let me send you my footage. So that's the video, I hope you enjoyed. This is kind of somewhat of a closure to my whole Hotel Cecil story that I've been doing for the past year now on YouTube. And this isn't a goodbye to the Hotel Cecil, it's more of just a pivot. It's um, a new chapter, which is exciting. It means there's something new to look forward to. It's not gonna be the same old thing. And I do see people now inside the windows walking around, so there are people who live there, which means I cannot be doing a Hotel Cecil live stream sleepovers. Like, I'm going to miss those. But if you are interested in watching my old ones, I'm making a compilation right now of the findings that we've seen, which will be out very soon. I know I've said that for a while, but it's actually finally happening because I have an editor doing it for me. Cheers to a new chapter. What is I am to be alive? Love you guys. Bye, have a great time.